Welcome. Let's go over some basics to get your tune idling perfect. Let's start with what we're going to accomplish today. The first thing is this is to be tuning the motor while it's hot. So this is a hot idle with no idle air control and we're just aiming to get the idle stable so it isn't hunting and if you don't know what hunting is it's something you probably heard when a car has some sort of vacuum leak it'll rev up and down up and down like that and it's just it's trying to find a stable idle but it can't because there's other problems uh, this is also aiming to just be a base to help you get this tuned in a reasonable amount of time just to sort it out there's a lot more details we can go into but this is the absolute basics to get you going okay first thing we want to start with is you do not want any sort of external factors affecting your idle. The first one being idle control. So go in and turn your idle control off. In here, just shut it off. You can also physically unhook the idle air control valve and make sure that you don't have any leaks. Uh, I've seen it so many times where there's an air leak, a vacuum hose missing, or the idle air valve itself is leaking and it's causing this issue. We want to try and tune the idle with as many, uh, with as few physical issues wrong with the car as possible. So try to sort out everything and make sure there aren't any vacuum leaks before we do this. But shut off the idle air control valve and or unplug it so that it's not affecting us. We're gonna be doing this while the motor's hot, so you'd preferably have a VE table, the fuel map, tuned out just enough to make it run and drive decent enough um, that it, it will run and drive around, and you, you know it's good for the most part, but you're potentially looking to make your idle better, or you're just trying to get the idle to actually not hunt or have any issues like that. All right, the next thing we need to do is shut off EGO correction. That is the wideband is actively changing the fuel map to try to correct it against the target air fuel map, the AFR map. So you can come in here and under controller authority, this is how much authority you're giving the wideband to change the fuel map. Set that to zero and or unplug or disconnect. You can even go in here and just hit disabled on your EGO sensor just disable that and go off of the wideband gauge in the car or if you don't have the wideband gauge leave this on but remove the controller authority so basically there's no external factor changing the fueling while you're trying to change it to make it correct for the idle okay the very first thing we want to look at after we've disconnected the idle control and removed EGO correction is the fuel table so we'll go into the VE table, and you can see down here in this bottom left-hand corner, all of these values are very similar. What you want to do is find where the motor generally wants to be idling. This is for stock cam engines that don't have a ton of lift, uh, relatively stock, I guess. That makes it a little bit easier to tune the idle because you don't have a lot of overlap adding extra air in and potentially giving you a kind of a false positive reading on your air fuel ratio. So say the, say the idle is hunting back and forth between these two values. You're idling right around 50 to 40 kPa. Make all of the, the values in that area the same. So you can see right here, this block of four, I just made them all the same. And what this does is it gives the same amount of fuel regardless of what area it's bouncing back and forth between at the idle so you know essentially under a thousand it'll it'll kind of have all of the same fuel this will help you stabilize probably more than anything so if you are trying to get a hunting idle and you have values kind of all over the place just take a block you could even take a whole block like this and just set it equal to like 28 just do this I know that there's better ways to do this if you go into very fine details, but this will basically help you block a hunting idle. The idle is either going to work or it won't because it has the same amount of uh, 
the same amount of fuel in that entire area where it's trying to hunt back and forth. You'll notice sometimes it'll go, wah, wah, wah. and if you make it all the same, that's one of the easiest ways to fix that. Then you can take this block and you can go up and down to try to change the air fuel ratio to get it to be happy. As soon as it's happy, I would just, uh, you know, as soon as you can get it to stop hunting, I would just leave it there until you can uh, watch the air fuels a little more carefully as you drive around and then you can start changing some of these values because a lot of these they actually might need more or less if I go back to where my tune was actually pretty happy let me go all the way back you can see that the values in here right here this is where we go the values in here were a little greater and they're a little greater above where the area that it idles but for the most part, it's very similar. They're not. There's not huge drastic changes. You're not going from 28 to 50 or 45 right after this cell. There's a, a gradual taper. And if you want, you can even go into this 3D view and you can see a little bit closer what your the area where your idol looks, how it looks. So you kind of want this to be a generally flat area that's there the values are all similar and the transition up to higher load and higher rpm are very smooth or somewhat smooth not every engine not every table uh, and and motor will run on a perfectly smooth map so don't worry about certain little dips it's more based on performance if the motor is idling well just go off of that a lot of motors uh, will idle between 12 to 1 air fuel ratio and 15 to 1 air fuel ratio. In my experience, it's drastically different how each motor will respond. A lot of batch fire fueled vehicles like to be rich. They like to run a little bit fat. Uh, in my experience, around 13 to 1. So I personally don't feel like there's any need to worry if you're idling a little bit fat but it isn't hunting I would just deal with a fat idle especially if it's batch fire some people would think you know 12.8 to 13.0 idling is uh, very rich and problematic but I've seen it idle perfectly on many vehicles and it makes the vehicle very drivable which is what we're looking for here okay so now that you've hashed out the fuel, you can go up and down, move that whole block around and just watch the air fuels until you can get it to idle as lean as possible without hunting or stuttering or bucking when you're taking off from um, a stop or when you when you rev and then come back to idle, you don't want it to, to kill the motor. So just focus on getting it to be very stable with blocking out a, a large area and setting all the values the same and then going up or down with all of those values in the fuel table. Okay, the next thing you can do, this is something you can fine tune with, is with ignition advance. Most, uh, most engines like to idle around 10 to 15 degrees of ignition advance. And what you'll find is about every five degrees of ignition advance can give you a fine tune of about a hundred rpm so for example right here where the motor typically idles if i drop this to 10 i would expect to see the idle drop about a hundred rpms the you can use the ignition advance to fine tune that um, but that's typically what you'll see the other thing you can you can use ignition advance in idle for is to help an idle if it is really having an issue stumbling. For example, say you have a motor that likes to idle around a thousand, but if it drops lower, uh, it kind of dies. You can increase the ignition advance a few degrees below where it idles. So say it idles in this cell, you can increase the ignition advance below it so that if it falls down, if it stumbles, the ignition advance gives it a little more torque and the motor kind of self-corrects and revs back up slightly up to a thousand. So the more ignition advance you have, generally the more power it's making. So for this case, you can add a little bit down here below where it idles. Obviously you could change this value 
to like 500 or something similar and this one to like 900 wherever it likes to idle you can set one row to or one or two rows i guess if you have a big enough table to where there's a little more ignition advance just below where it likes to idle in case it um if case it likes to oh sorry in case it likes to stumble in that area as well the other thing you can look at too is if you have a vehicle that struggles to take off from a stop say it's a manual transmission with a smaller motor uh, you can add a little bit of ignition advance um, to make it take off easier because you're giving it more power essentially by using this ignition advance at idle uh, by increasing it and so when you take off from a light you have a little bit more power the motor is making more power and torque so you can take off from a light easier i've noticed that with tuning a few vehicles well, this is about all you need to know to get started with getting your idle set up. Uh, make sure you set everything in, in blocks at first. Just block out an, an entire area, set it equal to a value that's reasonable for ignition advance, 10 to 15 degrees will do you well. Uh, depending on the situation, you can add a little bit of advance in an RPM range slightly below where it likes to idle to help it not hunt. If it, if it struggles to idle, it will help bring it back up to the, the normal values that it likes to idle in. And then the same can be said for the VE table. Just block off an area, set it all equal to one value that's reasonable. Like for my engine, it was 28. It might be you know, a block of six, a block of, you know, nine or eight or four, just start blocking off where it likes to go back and forth when you follow it while it's running. Um, it has a little trace here back and forth on the um, fuel map and just adjust it in big chunks from there and keep them all, all very similar. Make sure your idle air control valve is off and maybe unplugged. You can also, as a, uh, a bonus, you can also set a lot of your base idle with just the screw on the throttle, the throttle plate. Um, as long as you have a reasonable value in your ignition, you know, set your ignition table to like 10 and 10 degrees of ignition advance and your fuel, as long as you get it, you know, idling stably, you can adjust uh, a little bit more, a little bit more fine uh, adjustments with just the screw on the throttle plate and get it to idle lower if you want to do it that way as well. You'll also have to adjust the uh, the fueling again if you adjust with if you adjust that screw on the throttle plate. And uh, another thing you'll have to do most of the time is if you adjust that screw on the throttle plate, don't forget to come back in and calibrate your throttle position sensor because it will change that value slightly. Um, it, it sometimes if you adjust it will be off by. A few percent which sometimes can affect the way it idles but thank you for watching I appreciate all of you that follow and subscribe 97% of my sub my views come from people that are unsubscribed and I try to put out quality concise videos about mega squirt tuning as often as I can so if you're interested please subscribe it helps my channel grow and I would like to see this grow as much as possible thank you so much